Germany, France, Italy and Great Britain all entered the First World War with airships as part of their military strength. Although airships were used extensively during the conflict, only the Zeppelin raids over London remain as a lasting memory. Initially, the use of the airship as a strategic bomber was successful. It was possible to inflict damage and not come to any harm. However, the British defences improved to such an extent that airship losses became intolerable and strategic bombing was therefore abandoned. In retrospect, it can be seen that the episode was a failure. Little damage was done on the ground and the losses were enormous. During the 1920s, the United States commissioned three rigid airships. ZR-1, which became the Shenandoah, was the first airship to be inflated by helium. The ZR-2 was built in England, where it was designated the R-38. This airship suffered the ignominy of breaking up during performance trials. ZR-3 was built by the Zeppelin Enterprise in Germany as part of the war compensation to the United States. It was named the Los Angeles by President Coolidge's wife in 1923. During the early 1930s, the US Navy built two huge airships which were designed to carry out scouting duties for the fleets. These airships, the Akron and the Macon, were capable of carrying up to five aircraft each. These small scout aircraft were launched and recovered during the airship's flight. The primary task of the scouts was reconnaissance, but they were also required for defence. Defending these huge airships was a problem. In limited sea trials in the Caribbean, the Macon was repeatedly killed. The Akron and the Macon could only be successful in large oceans, where they could effectively lose themselves in the wide open spaces. Lieutenant Commander Wiley was given the task of proving the Macon in the role of scout. He decided to try to find the cruiser Houston, which was somewhere in the Pacific en route to Hawaii. President Roosevelt was on board. The operation was a success and the small scouts were able to buzz the cruiser when it was over 1500 miles from the nearest land. Initially this caused concern on the deck of the Houston. It looked as if the aircraft were on a bomb run but in fact they just dropped the latest San Francisco newspapers and some souvenir mail. It was a good public relations job for the aircraft carriers, but the tactics nearly resulted in the court-martial of Wiley. He only escaped after the intervention of the president. The Akron came down in a storm in 1933, and two years later, the Macon ditched in the Pacific. America's interest in the rigid airship was killed. However, it's interesting to speculate about how the Akron and the Macon would have been used in the Second World War. In particular, would the US Navy have been taken by surprise at Pearl Harbor? The development of the airship was bedeviled by bad luck, accidents, failures and disaster. By 1937, every country except Germany had quit the field. Only airships from the great Zeppelin enterprise were still operational. Zeppelin airships did not crash. Nobody had been injured on a Zeppelin. This was all to change on a catastrophic day in May 1937. The Hindenburg was about to complete the first Atlantic crossing of the new season. The airship was hovering over the mooring mast at Lakehurst in New Jersey. A message of safe arrival had already been sent to the Graf Zeppelin, which was en route from Brazil to Germany.
The message, though, was premature. As the huge airship prepared to dock, a small flame was noticed in a rear compartment. Within seconds, the whole airship was engulfed in flame. This was the final straw. The world had had enough of the airship. The only other airship in existence, the Graf Zeppelin, was withdrawn from service and later it was dismantled. But it could have been different. If helium gas had been used instead of the highly flammable hydrogen, if engineering necessity had been given greater priority than political expediency, or if the world had consisted of one large continent and sea travel had not been an option. In our story, gigantic airships rule the sky. Capable of launching and recovering their own aircraft, Zeppelins are able to defend themselves as they strike targets deep in enemy territory. The Emperor Thantos Araya was the ruler of Caranthia, but Araya had a problem. His son Otto was sickly and weak. It was Araya's plan for Otto to produce a healthy heir. But Araya's plan failed. He died before Otto could produce an heir. Then, on the eve of his crowning, Otto himself was found dead. It does not matter whether or not Otto's death was natural. What is significant, though, is the fact that there is no legitimate heir. Emperor Araya also has four daughters, and it is through them that the contenders make their claims. Duke Wilhelm Taranus, the belligerent leader of the north region of Caracas, has been preparing for this campaign for all of his adult life. Marrying one of the emperor's daughters is just one step in the preparations. Duchess Gabrielle de Rossia of the eastern district of Mercia is the most arrogant of the late emperor's daughters. She does not believe the fact that being a woman should stand between her and the throne. Gabrielle means to continue the Orion dynasty. Duke Ivan Paratrados, married to the third daughter, is from the southern region of Revant. He is concerned that Duke Tyrannus will become a tyrant, and so decides he must make a stand now. He hopes to achieve his aims through diplomacy rather than through violence. Duke Rowan Malhides, the husband of the fourth daughter, is the leader of the western region of Chanondon. The worsening political situation in Caranthia has meant that he has been forced to return from a relief mission in the earthquake-torn country of Barunda. In air power, you take on the part of one of these contenders, your aim being to reach the capital and claim the throne. Before attempting to make this claim, though, you must go on a campaign to gain the majority of the support in the empire. If you move to the capital too soon, you're likely to get the chop. The character of each contender is different. You must play the part and attempt to gain support in a way which is consistent with your character. Sometimes diplomacy will work. But often a show of force will be necessary. On your campaign, you may come across one of the other contenders. A fleet-to-fleet -fleet encounter is highly significant. At a stroke, you can knock out a third of your opposition. Obviously, there's also a risk of sudden death. On sighting another fleet, 
red alert is sounded. Pilots race to their combat stations. Aircraft are launched as quickly as possible to strengthen the air defense. If a carrier airship is caught unprotected, then the end is usually quick. In the game, you'll be able to achieve your objectives by using a mixture of diplomacy and flying skills. Sometimes diplomacy will allow you to avoid a fight and save time. After all, you're in a race against the other contenders. In the end, though, it's the flying that is important. You will be involved in air-to-air -air combat, airstrikes, escort missions and fleet-to-fleet -fleet encounters.